You're watching Adorama TV. Hi everybody, welcome to Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace. Well today we're going to be talking about a lineup of Sigma lenses here. Now these are all made for Canon cameras and we've got a lineup that starts uh, with an 18 to 200 millimeter lens that's for consumer lenses. This really replaces the kit lens that may have came, come with your camera. It's an 18 to 200 millimeter 3.5 to 6.3 lens. It's $500 and it is a great all-around lens. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a second. We've got a 150 millimeter uh, macro lens. This is a 2.8 and it's $1,100. It's a, a higher end lens. It's very nice. And then we also have this crazy lens right here. This is a 120 millimeter to 300 millimeter zoom and it's a 2.8 fixed. And so it's 2.8 through the entire zoom range. And this guy is $3,200. It's definitely a higher end lens. But if you compare this price to a Canon 300 millimeter fixed, which is their L lens, their 2.0L, uh, that ca uh, Canon lens is $7,300. So this is less than half the price of the Canon L lens that's not a zoom. So let's start over here with this lens. Uh, again, this is $500. This is the 18 to 200 millimeter lens. And the nice thing about this guy, this is made for replacing a kit lens. And it is an all around awesome lens because it's an 18 millimeter lens. That means you can shoot uh, lots of scenic photography. You can do your vacation shots. You can get some architectural shots, that kind of stuff. And then you can zoom in to do sports, you can do portraits, uh, you can do uh, you know, some uh, shots of wildlife, go to the zoo, that kind of stuff. And you've got everything in between. Now the aperture in this lens is not fixed, it's a 3.5 to 6.3. So it's 3.5 when you're zoomed all the way out at 18, and as you zoom in it turns into a 6.3 uh, aperture. And so that means at the uh, full length you don't have a lot of uh, light coming into the lens. And so in low light, this isn't going to be a great lens for you at the 200 millimeter side. Again, it's $500. Now, um, this has something on it that's very nice. It has optical stabilization, so OS. And so that's a, a stabilization technology that makes sure it takes out the um, jiggles that you may induce with your, uh, with your hands holding a camera. Now, I wanted to see how nice this was. And so we actually tested this out. And what I did was I shot at uh, 25th of a second, 1 25th of a second with uh, OS on and OS off. Now the crazy thing is at 25th of a second, uh, normally that's, the, that's impossible to shoot handheld because you're just uh, shaking too much, even if you're holding this as tightly as possible. And so I did that and I took my first shot and sure enough, we had lots of blur in the image. I clicked on the OS and took the same shot and I was able to shoot handheld at 200 millimeters at 1 25th of a second, which is really incredible. Now the other thing I wanted to check out was the bokeh on this lens. I went outside, took a portrait, and uh, the bokeh was okay. was not terrific, wasn't great um, compared to a lens like this guy right here, which is sort of an unfair comparison. You can see that the bokeh from a 300 millimeter 2.8 just is uh, radically different than a 200 millimeter 6.3, but Still a pretty darn good lens for the $500 price. So this is a great lens if you're just looking to upgrade your kit lens and get into a lens that's going to help you do just about everything. So again, it's the 18 to 200 millimeter, 3.5 to 6.3 for 500 bucks. All right, let's talk about this macro lens here. I'm going to set this aside for a second. This macro lens, I actually use this to test out. I actually use this uh, when I was shooting one of the digital photography one-on-one -on -one episodes. And so we use this to shoot a bunch of water droplet images uh, on a plane of glass with some really cool colors underneath that. And so we actually used this for uh, a, a good amount of time and I found it to be a pretty darn good lens. In fact, a pretty spectacular lens. In fact, you can see some of the images here that we shot of water drops and we have some reds and yellows and greens and all kinds of different colors here. And uh, while I was shooting that, I found that this lens behaved very well. Now there are some things that really help you shoot macro uh, photography and those are right here on the side of the lens. And so we have one of the things that's really nice is you can change uh, how much uh, this lens is focusing on different things. And so you can say I want this to be at full. In other words, focus on anything from as close to as far away as the lens can focus or restrict that. And so only go from uh, half a meter to infinity or just really focus on things that are very, very close. So um, 0.38 to 0.53 meters. So just really, really close to the lens. And so that way the autofocus isn't searching for something very far away if it knows you want it to focus on something close. So that's really nice. You can also click this right over into manual focus mode. And that's what I was doing because I was uh, shooting something that was translucent. Uh, this lens couldn't find focus on that. And so I just used manual focus. And the focus is nice and stiff. And so that's really good for a macro lens because a lot of times you have this down and you don't want that focus to shift 
based on the lens elements and gravity pulling that. Now this also has optical stabilization, so you can stabilize this lens as well. And so it's got two modes, and so you can have this where it uh, corrects for all movement or it just corrects for uh, vertical movement when you're panning. And so you can actually use this lens for a sports lens um, to shoot wildlife and stuff. So you can use this as a portrait or sports lens at 150 millimeters if you'd like. And so it doubles not only as a macro lens, but as just a long telephoto lens. So it's pretty awesome. So that lens is $1,100 and uh, I really enjoyed working with that lens. Now let's talk about this big guy right here. This lens, again, I mentioned this, this is a $3,200 lens, so it's definitely a higher end lens. Now, again, compare this to Canon's 300mm 2.8L, and that's $7,300. So again, this is about half, a little less than half that price. Now, this also is a zoom lens, and so it zooms from 120 millimeters all the way to 300 millimeters. So I'll take this lens hood off here, and normally that's on here you know, a little bit like that. And so you can see this is a pretty beefy lens. Um, so that's going to be on a full frame camera and it works for sports, it works great for portraits and the thing that I was asking myself is, is this going to be sharp, does it have a nice bokeh, how fast is the autofocus? And the answer to that is I was really impressed with this lens. In fact, I'm surprisingly impressed at how well it behaved and so I've shot with the 300 millimeter Canon uh, quite a bit and I would say that this uh, held up to the focus speed and the bokeh of that lens, and even the clarity of that lens. And so we have some samples here at 300 millimeters at 2.8. You can see that without applying any sharpening or anything else to these images, that it is razor sharp. And you can also see in this image here that uh, the bokeh of this lens just, it just sort of blows everything out in the background. It's very, very milky and soft. It's really very, very nice. So I was really impressed with the image clarity. There wasn't any vignetting. Uh, this behaved very well from 120 all the way to 300. I did some focus tests where I was zooming while I was in continuous focus mode and this was able to keep up with me. I was moving the lens all around with the image stabilization on. That I didn't have any issues with that. We had some things that were moving around as I was moving and also had pretty good results. Results. So as a sports shooter, this is going to be a great lens. As a portrait photographer, this is also going to be a great lens. And if you're a wildlife photographer, this is going to be pretty good as well. Now, a couple of things that I noticed about this that I think could be improved. One is that the, there's only one quarter 20 thread on the tripod mount. And I wish there were a couple other options here because I found that I wish that I had a little bit different of a center of gravity. So when I had things mounted on here, I wanted to put my tripod plate in a different spot and I couldn't. So I wish that was a little bit different. This, uh, this uh, knob right here that locks the ring is really sticky and maybe that would loosen up a little bit with some use, but it was sort of hard to change from portrait to vertical with this, uh, this locking mechanism. So that I think could be improved as well. Um, I did find that the OS worked very, very well with me. The other thing I, I really wanted to, uh, to change was the um, zoom ring and the focus ring are reversed from Canon's L lenses and Canon's lenses. So if you're used to shooting with those, um, I really didn't like how this was. I wish the zoom ring was back toward the camera and the focus ring was out toward the end of the lens. And so I found myself being confused with that just because I'm used to shooting with Canon lenses so much. So my preference is to reverse those. You can't do that. So that's a bummer. And the other thing that this doesn't have that a higher end lens does and a lot of Canon L lenses have are uh, buttons that you can program. So, you know, I wish there was an autofocus button that I could have uh, had on that lens to turn that on and off and some other things. So this lens doesn't have some of those things that a higher end lens has at more than twice the price. So the question is, $3,200, is this lens worth it? Well, I would say if you are uh, looking for a serious lens that's going to be a 300 millimeter 2.8, that this is a phenomenal lens. In fact, I was very, very impressed by this. And I think uh, based on the sample photos that we've shown you, you can see why. So it's very much worth the money. And uh, I highly recommend this lens. In fact, all of these lenses uh, were very, very nice and easy to work with. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, and that's this guy right here, the Sigma 18 to 200 millimeter lens does not work on a full frame camera. This is made for uh, smaller sensors. So cameras that are like the Digital Rebel, the 7D, etc. If you try to put this on a full frame camera, you're going to get massive vignetting it's not made for a full frame camera. But there you have it, the 18-200, the 150 millimeter macro, the 120-300 millimeter, 
all terrific lenses. And one other thing, the 300 comes with this very nice case, and so it's gonna, uh, it's got lots of protection and stuff. So if you want to have something to pack this in besides your camera bag, it comes with that. In fact, all these lenses come with cases. This one was just very, very nice, which you might need for a large lens like this. Well, there you have it, Sigma lenses for Canon, and I think they're terrific. And if you have more questions about these lenses, and if you want the full specs and all the charts and all that kind of stuff, make sure you go to the Adorama Learning Center. There are links to each of these lenses with the product description and all of the technical details so you can really check out the specs and make sure it's the right lens for you. Well, thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you again next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.